Have you ever felt like everyone on Earth is gaming on a NASA supercomputer while you're stuck with a potato PC? Well, I just bought a thousand dollar PC thinking that I was on top of the world. But then I open YouTube and every single person has a GPU that costs more than my whole setup. And because I'm exposed to so many people who have expensive computers, this made me want to buy one too. But there's just one problem. I am extremely poor. I can't just buy a $7,222 PC to one-up the competition. But then I remembered. There are also a lot of people out there who have the same amount of fun gaming on the worst setups. Maybe not this one though. So instead of spending more money to make my way up, I'm gonna find the cheapest PC in the world and optimize it until every single game is playable to prove that you can play the same games as these rich kids without spending your entire life savings. Because you know what they say, it's not about how much we have, but how much we enjoy it. The first step to optimizing a $50 PC is to find one. So where are we going to find the cheapest PC? Well, Amazon has $50 PCs, but combined with the shipping price, we're going to go way over our budget. And we can't buy it from eBay because it's either the PC is too expensive or it's straight up too shit to even be usable. Fortunately, I have a few potato PCs just lying around from 2012 to 2014. This is a 2012 Lenovo Think Center with an i5-3570. And right now you can buy a Think Center with the same CPU for 30 bucks, which is nuts because it was released for for $730. I would rather listen to KSI's new song for 5 seconds straight than pay $730 for this thing, bro. I'm in the thick of it, everybody. And that might not sound that crazy until you realize that you can build a pretty high-end gaming PC for just $700 in 2024. But since we only spent $30 of our $50 budget, I conveniently got the worst graphics card of all time, the GT710, which conveniently sells for around 20 bucks on the used market. With a whopping 2GB of VRAM in a time where 8GB isn't enough, this is the one thing that might stop us from being able to enjoy the newest games of 2024. But actually, there's one more thing that might stop you from enjoying the newest games, and that one thing is lag. And this is where exit lag comes into play. It's an app that drops and stabilizes your ping in hundreds of different games by optimizing your routes to the game servers. And my ping got noticeably better in Fortnite Reload, dropping from 27 to 22, and my ping in Battle Royale dropped from 20 to just 10 ping. I tried to find free alternatives to exit lag when I first started making videos, but nothing was as good as the results I got with this app. So I'm super glad to partner with them for this video, especially since they've been the most reliable and most popular gaming VPN in every online gaming community for years now. So if you want to get rid of lag and get lower ping, get a free trial with the link in the description, and of course, it doesn't ask you for your credit card information. All you have to do is make an account with an email address, and once you have the app, select from over 1000 supported games and watch your lag spikes in every online game disappear. For less than 5 bucks a month, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. But wait a second, isn't this the same CPU and GPU combo as my dad's 7 year old PC from this video? Well that PC was actually from 2012, and because of all the mean but also very helpful comments about the dead SSD killing our FPS, we got him a new SSD, which will make it slightly less unusable, so I decided to give this computer another chance. Okay, so now that we have the $50 PC in hand, we can now decide on two goals that determine whether or not a game counts as playable, so this is what I came up with. Get at least 60 FPS in all competitive esports games, and at least a cinematic 24 FPS in all story games. However, neither of these challenges were the hardest challenge of this video. Remember how I just put in a new SSD? Well, my dad already filled it up with 8,000 photos. So because each game takes up to 100 gigabytes, I ended up spending over 40 hours just to download and install all these games. Not only that, but with the new games being more and more graphically demanding and less and less optimized, even the fastest GPUs, including my $400 6900 XT, can struggle to play them. So to make this potato work, we're gonna have to do some crazy black magic. This setup is so old it doesn't even have HDMI. Now that we got our first game installed, we're going to be testing all types of games starting from 2012 all the way up to 2024 to see just how far we can push this $50 PC. First up is 2012, which was an unbelievable year for video games. With Halo 4 and Black Ops 2 dropping in the same year, 2012 was objectively an amazing year for video games. With bangers on top of bangers, it was hard to choose which one I wanted to test, but I ended up choosing Far Cry 3, and don't hate me for this, but I've honestly never played this game because up until 2016, my only consoles were the PSP and the Wii. 
I didn't even have Wi-Fi at the time, so y'all gotta forgive me for this. And now you might think that the 2016 GT 710 would be able to handle old games from 2012 to 2015 because technology advances so quickly. But you would be completely wrong, because the GT 710 is not really a graphics card, but more like a glorified HDMI port. If you look at 2020's list of GPU releases, you'll notice that the slowest card released that year is still a very solid card for 1080p to this day, and still meets minimum requirements of even the newest, most demanding games of 2024, but the GT 710 doesn't even meet the minimum requirements for games that came out before it. So we were in for a bumpy, pixelated ride. This is quite... The gaming experience we're playing cursor multiplying simulator there's a difficulty that's worse than malaria bro this would not slide in 2024 so because the hd game trailer was in 720p we're gonna be doing 720p high to ultra settings in the intro cutscene we're doing way better than i expected but the actual gameplay on the other hand was not a playable gaming experience so i did have to drop the settings down to low and we did reach the goal of getting 24 fps on a single player game and even at low settings far cry 3 is looking damn good for a 2012 game and it's definitely playable so for a 50 dollars pc that definitely gets a pass Next up is 2013, which reminded me of how long it's been since we got a new GTA game. I went from grade 3 to university in the time it took for these bitches to make a single video game. Anyways, for the 2013 benchmark, you know I had to try Tomb Raider on 720p low settings, and it passed the 24fps mark pretty comfortably, averaging 42.7fps. Moving on to 2014, we got Mario Kart 8, Titanfall, and Five Nights at Freddy's. Hello everybody, my name is Welcome. And we're going to be testing Dark Souls 2, which is not the most loved FromSoft game, but I still think it's pretty good. Only problem is that I forgot the FPS count, so you're just going to have to look at the footage and decide how much FPS you think that is. To me, that looks way over 24 FPS, and we could definitely crank up the settings if we wanted to. So far, these games on 720p low settings have been pretty light on this PC, and we're easily getting above 24 FPS. But just before I was about to make the challenge harder, 2015 had something to say, and it wouldn't let us get 24 FPS that easily. 2015 was probably my favorite year for gaming, not because it was a huge part of my childhood, but it just had so many good games. It's easily a top 3 year for gaming, and it's hard to debate against Bloodborne, Witcher 3, Arkham Knight, and my personal favorite game of all time, Rise of the Tomb Raider. But after these benchmarks, I started to question whether or not I actually like this game anymore, because even with my FPS counter disabled, you can just tell that we're struggling to hit the 24 FPS mark. And we finished with a measly 16 FPS. I have more years on this earth than FPS in this game. This is extremely bad. I would rather watch Talk Tua than play this game at 16 FPS. You know, I thought 720p looked pretty bad on a 22 inch monitor, but we're gonna downgrade to 800 by 600. And we're still getting only 22 FPS, so it is time to start optimizing this PC. I honestly wasn't expecting to have to optimize my computer this early in the video, but Rise of the Tomb Raider really wanted us to fail. Not only that, but it looks like my optimizing app also wants me to fail because it won't let me use my premium account, so we're gonna have to use the free optimizations to try to get us up to 24 FPS. After using those free tweaks, I continued optimizing my PC with my own optimization guide, but the issue is that that guide was designed for Fortnite, which is a CPU based game, and because it's only the GPU that's causing the low FPS, optimizing the CPU did not help us very much at all. See, with these optimizations, I was able to boost my FPS on my main PC from 180 to 200 FPS in this game. And if you do the math, that is an 11% performance increase, so you would expect us to get the same 11% increase to boost our FPS from 22 to 24. But in reality, we only got 0.02 more FPS. But fortunately, I came prepared and set my graphics card to OC mode, which barely helped us at all. Usually, overclocking helps a ton, especially when we're bottlenecked by the GPU, so I boosted the clock speed even more, and we still only have 23.83 FPS, but that isn't exactly 24 FPS, so I tried boosting my clock speeds even higher, and if you remember the last time I overclocked my GPU this much, I ended up freezing my computer, so this time I overclocked my GPU knowing full well that I could freeze this potato. Um, what the skibbity? We're seriously running out of options here. If I can't get this to work, this video will be a huge failure but we're way too far in to give up, so sadly, I have to cheat by using lossless scaling. If you've never heard of this app before, it's a super cool software that can upscale your games, and you can even generate new frames. This worked extremely well on my personal PC, as well as my old gaming laptop. But in order to multiply your FPS with two times or three times frame generation, you need at least some FPS to start with, because multiplying zero by any number will still give you zero. So not only do we have too little FPS to properly use frame generation, 
But because the GPU we have is too weak to process those frames in the first place, we somehow decreased our FPS with this app. Lossless scaling? More like lossless failing. You know what, every time I make an unfunny joke, I'm just gonna put a meme. Normally at this point I would give up on the challenge, but I've already spent over 10 hours on this video, we're only 4 years into the challenge, and we still have 9 years worth of games to try before we can say that every game is playable on this $50 PC. So to keep this challenge going, I'm sadly gonna have to count the 23.83 FPS as a success, because I know for a fact that the next games we're gonna test will be much easier to run than 2015's Tomb Raider. 2016 was arguably a top 3 year for gaming as well, coming out with Uncharted 4, Dark Souls 3, and Doom. Since Dark Souls 2 went so well for us, I expected the third game in the series to be about as easy to run, but the only easy thing here was coming up with a fire name for my character. We were only able to get 24 FPS by staring into the ground or looking into the sky, but 2017 is where you will see a huge change of scenery because Fortnite is a CPU based game. In every single player game we've tested so far, the GPU was bottlenecking the CPU, constantly running at 100% while the i5-3570 was just chilling. But with a CPU dependent game like Fortnite, we managed to get way above 100 FPS while looking into the sky. But you might be thinking, this doesn't count, we have to see real gameplay, not just looking into the sky. And this is where my PC starts to stutter like crazy, as my FPS begins to stutter in replay mode, in both build mode as well as zero build. So if you're gonna play Fortnite in 720p, you might want to spend a bit more than 50 bucks on your PC. Though we had a stuttery gaming experience in 2017, 2018 wasn't gonna let us have any type of experience at all. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one of the best looking games of 2018, gave us our very first warning, telling us that our newest driver was still too old to run this game. This is just devastating news for our 2014 graphics card because we're getting 7 FPS in the main menu. Dude, we're not even in the game yet. I'd even want to benchmark the game because I'm scared it's gonna make me want to rip my eyes out. And with the next games being basically impossible to play, I thought it would be a good idea to change the challenge from getting 24 FPS to opening the game because I really thought the worst GPU of 2014 would be able to at least handle games released a few years after it came out. But no, any game past 2014 is just going to be too much for this guy. And to add on to the previous year, 2019 was not going to let this GT710 survive. With the minimum requirements for Resident Evil 2 being a GTX 960, the GT710 got absolutely cooked, even in 720p. But hey, at least the game opened. And I think this is the first time that I've ever been disgusted by a hamburger. Like, why does it look so disgusting? Next was 2020, and this year was really a huge turning point in gaming as the pandemic hit, and multiplayer games like Among Us, Fall Guys, and Valorant came into the scene. The original plan was to try Cyberpunk 2077, but I test that game in pretty much every video, so I decided to switch things up a bit this time, so I tested Fall Guys instead. It's a pretty casual game with extremely simple controls and a few tryhards here and there, so for the most part, it is still playable between 30 and 40 FPS, and at 720p lowest settings, that is not a bad result for a game from 2020. 2021's Life is Strange 3 ran pretty consistently between 20 and 40 FPS, and my favorite game from 2022, Stray, was doing... Eh, alright at 360p. Not too good. For 2023, I know you guys want to see Starfield, Spider-Man 2, or Baldur's Gate 3, but we don't have enough SSD space for a single one of these games. 150 gigabytes! So I downloaded Counter-Strike 2 knowing that the GT710 is guaranteed to work, until it didn't. I have the newest driver installed, and all my background apps are closed, but CS2 just didn't want to boot up. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to take an L here, even though I know the GT710 can handle this game. After 2023 is the true test of longevity, 2024. The 1080 Ti which came out a year after the GT710 handles Black Myth Wukong on high settings with no problem, but the GT710 gave us yet another driver warning. It recommended a driver update that doesn't even exist for the GT710, and the benchmark tool simply does not work on my PC, probably because the game sees that I am nowhere near the minimum requirements. But hey, if you don't care about the newest games from the past couple years, this $50 PC will do just fine. And remember, this thing costs less than a lot of the video games we tried playing on it. And if you want to see me succeed and get 1500 FPS on two different graphics cards at the same time, watch this video next.